my goodness, I cannot believe I'm actually doing this. Welcome everybody to Grace Through Pain, A Journey to Hope. I am beyond excited and nervous uh, for this to be my first episode of my podcast. I feel like I'm such a rookie and I have talked with so many of you on my YouTube channel, Marty's MS Life, and of course on Instagram and TikTok. And this is a completely new space and new medium for me. I have no idea what I'm doing. And um, so it is very appropriate that the title of this podcast is Grace, because I'm going to need so much of your grace on, on this journey, but I'm excited. I can't wait to reach even more of you and hear your stories and continue to share my stories with you. Uh, for those that don't know me, again, my name is Marty Hines, and I am the creator of the Instagram and YouTube channel, Marty's MS Life. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in August of 2018. I was on family vacation in Martha's Vineyard and felt fine, felt healthy. And one morning I woke up completely paralyzed on the left side of my body. And that was my entry into uh, the world of multiple sclerosis. It was very traumatic. I had never really been sick. I had never been in the hospital before. And uh, this was a shock. Uh, it's something that I know so many of us living with chronic illnesses are still struggling with acceptance and denial and grief. And five years later, I'm still very much in that same place. And I just felt that finding different ways to connect with this community would not only help others hear and learn about what goes on in my health journey, but that it would also help me. And it's been so cathartic uh, speaking with all of you and hearing all of your stories. And uh, my cup is always filled whenever I sit down and have the opportunity and the chance to create and share uh, my content with you guys. So thank you for being with me on this journey thus far, for following me on this new path. And uh, for those that are just finding this podcast and, and finding my page, uh, thank you so much. Welcome. Uh, it's going to be a really good time. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Marty's MS Life or on YouTube also at Marty's MS Life, which is going to be um, just here at the bottom of the screen. Okay. So, grace through pain. Um, as you know, as all of us know that are living with multiple sclerosis and many other chronic illnesses, pain is such a part of our day-to-day -day existence. Uh, most people that I talk to that are living with MS are in pain every day. Um, my pain in this moment is sitting between a four and a five. I'm sure that you can even tell in my voice, I'm congested, I'm getting over pneumonia, which for those of you that don't know, when you have multiple sclerosis, your immune system is compromised and that means we get sick. But when we get sick, it's even worse, even scarier. Um, I caught a cold and it would not get better. I wasn't resting enough. I was still trying to do and be all of the things uh, during the holiday season and it turned into pneumonia. I wound up in the hospital and I am still recovering from that. Uh, but thankfully, uh, I hope the worst is behind me. But pain was a major player and present uh, during that entire experience and pain is a part 
of my day um, every day. And so I thought that it was a really great idea to just kind of talk a little bit more about how we all cope and manage and get through this life of pain that we now have. And for me, so much of that is wrapped into grace. I have had to give myself so much more grace. I am a hyperproductive type A uh, aggressive personality. And I didn't really have a lot of empathy for others or uh, even myself. I, I really felt that there weren't really excuses for things that you needed to get things done and you needed to execute and do it well and do it quickly. And when I got diagnosed, so much of that changed when my body wasn't allowing me to move and work in the way that I was used to. And I had to pause and again, give myself grace. And it's the, the thing with MS is it's, it's taken so much from me, but I really like to think about the things that it has provided for me and the things that it's given me and empathy and grace is one of those. I realize now, especially living with an invisible illness that people are going through so much that we have no idea. We have no idea what someone's going through. And so when someone's having a bad day, when someone isn't treating me well or treating me in the way that I think that they should, uh, it's so much easier for me now to extend grace and forgiveness and you know, that doesn't mean that you allow people to walk all over you. It doesn't mean that you don't still have boundaries. It doesn't mean that you don't enforce those boundaries with the different people in your life, but it's just with more kindness. It's uh, leaving that door open. So uh, even if you do have to step away or step back, uh, it's not a shut door. It's not a closed door. There's there's room for things to kind of come back around. And that's what I love about grace. And so I thought that it was a, a perfect uh, title. And I think that when we talk about these different topics and everything uh, that is involved with living with uh, a chronic illness, grace just continues and continues to, um, you know, kind of come up. So all that to say, this is a journey and um, I like to believe that it's a journey of hope. It's a journey of faith. I say often that I believe that there will be a cure for multiple sclerosis in my lifetime. I'm 40 years old and I am seeing the research. I'm seeing the leaps and bounds that are happening. And uh, it's something that I really believe it. So uh, this is a journey to hope. And even in your darkest days, it's leaning on that, leaning on your faith, leaning on that hope that uh, you, this is going to get better, even if it doesn't feel that way or seem that way. So, but today I mentioned it when I said that I was getting over pneumonia. I want to talk about uh, these flare-ups that we have when we overdo it. And by no means am I saying that I deserved to get pneumonia or I deserved to be in the hospital because that's categorically not true. But I wasn't listening to my body. I wanted to do and do and go and go uh, it was the holiday season. I love Christmas. It is my favorite time of year. It is just the most magical time of year. Mariah Carey is my spirit sister and all things Christmas. And I go overboard. You know, I get the tree November 1st, a real tree. It's the entire house is decorated. 
Christmas parties, Feast of Seven Fishes dinners that I'm making from scratch, seven courses, just over the top for Christmas. And I want to do it all. It's something that's so important to me. It's something that I love. It's something that I enjoy. And I hate that MS gets in the way of that. And I think that I kind of become really obstinate and really uh, aggressive about putting my foot down with MS and saying that I am going to do these things. You're not going to stop me. I'm going to do every single thing I used to do before I got sick. And it really, um, I paid the price for that this holiday season. Uh, I was sick. I knew I was sick. I thought I was doing my part. I spoke to my primary care, got some prescription cough medicine, you know, felt like, okay, I'm, I'm engaging. I'm, I'm actively participating in my health, uh, which is what we say a lot. But the truth of the matter was, is that, you know, I needed rest. You can take all of the medicine in the world, but if you are getting on a plane, traveling across the world. I decided to go to China for 36 hours with a good friend of mine. Uh, I am obsessed with Disney and we will talk about that in future episodes, but Disneyland Hong Kong was having its grand opening of um, Arendelle, which is from the movie Frozen. And when my friend Mike sent me a text asking if I wanted to go to Arendelle, I had no idea what that meant, but I said, absolutely and found myself in Hong Kong uh, for 36 hours, all while being sick. And it was just a matter of time that my body was going to shut down. And I went into a flare and wasn't getting any better, started to have a fever, started struggling being able to breathe, found myself in the emergency room and had uh, a lung infection, pneumonia. And so many of you all that I talked to on my Instagram were messaging during the holiday season about how tired they felt, how sad they felt that they couldn't participate in different family traditions. Others saying that they had pushed themselves too hard, that they were overdoing it and they knew it and that they were going to pay for it that they were afraid of the price that they would be paying for it. And it just broke my heart because I want us to have it all. We deserve to have it all. We deserve to be able to have these special moments with our family. We deserve to be able to do whatever our, our heart desires and to know that if we were to do them, that we'd pay for it, that there'd be this price that we'd have to pay for with our health. It just feels so unfair. And I'll be honest with you, when a healthy person tries to tell me, oh, well, since you know your body can't handle that, why don't you just do it this way? Why don't you just only decorate half of your house. Maybe just get an artificial tree. Maybe don't take the trip, or if you take the trip, go longer, or, or don't do all of the activities, or maybe don't do Feast of Seven Fishes. Maybe just do a dinner, and all of these kind of compromises and, and ways that, you know, I should be happy because I at least was able to do a little bit of what I wanted and, and why not just do that? And I get it. I'm not five. I understand that you can't have it all. I understand that you have to compromise and let's take a, a different look at, at kind of how to get to the, the result that we want. I get it. I got it. I have a therapist. I have a business coach. I'm well aware of 
all of the different options and bridges to kind of get to the desired feeling state that you want. And it just pisses me off. It really pisses me off because I don't want to only do one half of my house. I don't want an artificial tree. I don't want to just make a dinner and not do the Feast of Seven Fishes. I don't want to do that. I want to do what I want to do. I want to do what I've been doing my whole life, what I've been doing for 35 years. And I should be able to do that. I'm not elderly. My body should still be able to meet me and do the things that I want to do. Nothing that I want to do is so far off base and, and so nothing that I want to do is so large and so off base that I shouldn't be able to do it. My body should be able to allow me to decorate Christmas tree. My body should be able to allow me to make a meal. My body should be able to allow me to go to an amusement park. These are things that my body should be able to do. I don't want to do something less than. I don't want to come up with the compromise. And it's okay to say that. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to tell someone to go to hell when they give that example. It's okay. It's okay to be mad with a period. It sucks. And I think that's what I really wanted to kind of start with as we begin this journey of this podcast is to just let you know that it's okay and to give yourself again that grace that it's okay to be pissed. It's okay to be mad. I'm angry so much of the time and I've learned that it's okay to have that anger. I don't have to let that anger go, but I do have to find a place to hold that anger so that it doesn't take up my whole life, so that it doesn't take up my whole being, so that it doesn't find its way into hurting and eroding the relationships of people that I love and care about. And so it's just working on finding, again, a space to hold that anger so that you can still carry on, so that you can get through it and try to find the best out of what you can. And I don't, I don't have those answers. I don't, I haven't figured it out. Um, some days I feel like I just got diagnosed. Sometimes that, that grief hits me. Oh, like a wrecking ball. And it's August of 2018 again. And I'm just scared and I'm lonely and I'm angry and I'm in pain. And so when you have those days, Please, please just know you're not alone. Please know that this is a part of that journey for us and it's not fair. There's no silver lining. But it doesn't have to be our whole story and I really just try to focus on making sure that that's, that's not what my story is, that there's so much more to me. And that's what I can't wait to continue to talk to you guys about. Um, there's just so much outside of Disney, which I could go on and on for an entire episode, which I'm sure I probably will uh, as we continue to get to know each other. But I'll, I'll, ease, you in. I'll ease you into that one. I would love to hear from you all about 
how you find ways to show yourself grace and to not be so hard on yourself. So please, you can message me, send me a question, just let me know how you're doing because I just can't wait to talk with you here. I know as um, the show continues, we're going to have some guests, uh, some folks that have been on my YouTube channel that I'll be bringing back uh, for this podcast, as well as getting to a point where you'll be able to kind of call in and kind of share the video screen with me. So I have big dreams, big hopes uh, for this, and I am committed in 2024 uh, to doing an episode every week um, so that I can just engage and see you all so much more because it's something that fills me up so much more than you possibly could ever know and I've missed talking to you all and I just think that it's something that we need. We need this space, we need this time and it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. So again, you can follow me um, at these handles that are up here on the screen. Please subscribe to the podcast uh, so that you can get alerts for when I'm back. If you are watching this, I, of course, it makes sense that I am not at home. I'm in a hotel room that the first episode would be filmed, uh, not in my home office. Hopefully we'll get an episode in there soon. But for now, I am, as usual, on the road. And uh, that's also part of who I am, which... I hope to be able to always continue to be, and I hope that you can as well, because it's something that I think gives me my strength when I can continue to do things that authentically are me and that were always me. It's what keeps me going. It's what makes me know that I'm going to win this, this battle. And I know you are too. So looking forward. Again, welcome to Grace Through Pain, A Journey to Hope, and I will talk to you all next week. Bye.